previously during the investigation. F. K. In the coffee. I knew I could count on it. Never fails. Ah, the perpetrator. Bit off Anna's tongue. Jackpot sack. A shame, but our old-time all-American sightseeing tour just came to an end. When purple fog covers our town, we'll all wander in hell, I fret. So says Mr. Stewart. Oh, well, there's an old story. Folklore. It's a fairy tale to me. Something about a killer in a raincoat who appears on rainy nights. She had a red dress on. She was a goddess. It's starting to rain. I think this case may take a while. I had a chat with Diane. She said she was at the bar drinking with Nick at the time of the murder. We need to confirm her story. Let's talk to Nick at the diner. Very well, Agent Morgan. I have to head back to the department and clear up some paperwork. Go with Emily to the a g diner. Okay. I'll show you the way. The diner's open from 9 to 2100. Just as we suspect, Zach. Diane is the key to this case. I have a feeling she will lead us right to the criminal. Emily, do you know a man named Forrest Kaysen? Kaysen? Yes, I, I know him. The, the sapling salesman, right? He always uses strange comparisons when he talks. I'd like to know more about him. What does he do when he comes to town? He's a salesman, so I guess he sells things? Maybe he comes on vacation? I, we haven't seen many tourists recently, but he comes pretty often. Is that all? Well, now that you mention it, he seems quite friendly with the Ingrams, with Isaac and Isaiah. Maybe you should ask them about Kaysen. Okay, I will. Emily, don't you find it a bit suffocating to be around George so much? Well, we aren't always together. And anyway, I've gotten used to him. Impressive. Women are very adaptable. No, it's not like that, actually. George is hard-headed, sure, but he's also a hard-working man. That's why the townsfolk trust him so much. The very epitome of the rural sheriff. That's right. He isn't some hotshot FBI agent. This place isn't like the city. Everyone knows everyone else. What about you and Anna? Were you too close? No, not close, really. I don't seem to have much in common with teenagers nowadays. All they talk about are boys, clothes, and accessories. I don't have much interest in any of those things. There is a gap between a teenager and being in your 20s. Everyone's different, that's all. Me and you, too. Zach, I'm not liking the way this conversation is heading. Let's concentrate on driving instead. Stand for. Any ideas, Emily? 
Nope, I don't know either. Air and gravity, perhaps? Access and games? Aliens and Godzilla? Who knows? Is it important to know? <laughs> Why don't you just ask Nick? First, I need to eat. I wonder what's good here. Welcome, Mr. Agent. Hi, Olivia. Let me have your special for today. And some fresh coffee. Our special today is turkey. A turkey and gravy sandwich. Sound good? Perfect. Emily, you eat something, too. It'll be on the FBI. Okay, then. I'll go all out. I'll have the T-bone steak. I usually can't order it because it's a little too expensive. Mrs. Olivia Cormack, I am here for Mr. Stewart's lunch. If it is ready, I'd thank you a bunch. Yes, of course. Just a moment. Here you go. The usual. One turkey, strawberry jam, and cereal sandwich. Sounds like the sinner's sandwich. Self-inflicted punishment to atone for past sins. He's setting an example. Mr. Francis York Morgan, you should try this wonderful lunch. It's more than a delicious, tasty crunch. So says Mr. Stewart. No, that's fine. I've just ordered my own lunch. Mr. Francis York Morgan, I, that is, Mr. Stewart's order is delicious, I should mention. And Mr. Nick Cormack is a genius for creating this perfection. So says Mr. Stewart. Still, I have a hunch I might not like it. Are you sure that sandwich is that good? Mr. Francis York Morgan. Making decisions based on intuitions is always a sign of bad FBI agents. So says Mr. Stewart. Harry, you're right. I'll give it a try. I'm sorry, but can I change my order? I'll have what Harry's had. Nick and Diane. They hardly make the perfect couple, do they? Is it widely known that they go drinking together, just the two of them? To be honest, I don't pay attention to these things. Not into local gossip? Well, when I moved here, I was still in high school, and I kept wearing the same wild clothes from my school in Seattle. I was young back then. And before I knew it, there were rumors all over the school. She'll screw anyone. That's what they said. Totally unfounded, of course. Anyway, after that, I just sort of chose not to really trust gossip. I get where you're coming from. I used to dress like a hardcore punk rocker when I was in high school. <laughs> you? A punk rocker? <laughs> Nobody took my side. Even when I had good grades, people rejected me just because of what I wore. I was young back then, too. <laughs> Even still, I just don't see you as a punk rocker. <laughs> and you laugh. Could you? No makeup on, dressed in uniform, eating a steak for lunch. Okay, back to work. Let's talk to Nick.
There's something I'd like to confirm with you, Olivia, if that's okay. Yes. Well, so long as it doesn't take too long. First, what were you and Nick doing on the night of the murder? I was here in the diner. Nick said he was going to the bar for a couple of drinks. Does he go to the bar often? Leaving you to hold up the fort? Yes. He says he enjoys the conversation with Diane. I thought they went drinking again together that night. Do the three of you ever go drinking together? Well, you see, I'm really not into art. And your husband is well versed in the arts then, I take it? Oh yes, um, looking at art and talking about it is his way of relaxing. <laughs> People just aren't what they seem. Like a certain someone who was into punk rock ten years ago. You are absolutely right, Emily. But you can be an art lover and a liar at the same time. One more thing, Emily. You just said that you aren't interested in art. That's right. And... So, how come I bumped into you at the art gallery? Didn't seem like Nick brought you there, you were there alone. Trees is the thing. That's why I went there. Surely you'd be better off in the forest rather than an art gallery then. Uh... I think you went to the gallery not to see trees, but to see Diane, right? Uh, uh... You don't want to answer. Or perhaps this isn't the right place to ask. M meet me in the backyard. You can get there from the parking lot. I'll wait for you there for an hour after we close up. They close at 2100. Should we get something to drink and wait? Agent York, what do we do now? I want to hear what Olivia has to say. Let's kill time until the diner closes. Okay, then I'm going to make a trip back to the department. I'll see you in the backyard later. Okay, sounds good. See you later then. Back about Olivia. I presume she wants to tell us something about Nick and Diane. Let's hope it's not just something for the gossip cops.
Well, then, Olivia, talk to me. Y yes. In the beginning, Nick only went to the gallery during the day. But he went so often, at some point, he became friendly with Diane. They started going out drinking together, and now he doesn't come home until early morning. Diane says that they were only drinking he blames me for not being able to talk about Turner and Rembrandt. Which of course I can't, can I? So what can I say? Finally, I couldn't take it anymore. So I followed him. He did go to the bar, to start with. Diane was there too. But the real problem is where they go to next, right? So, I waited outside the bar to see where they might go. And, and they eventually left the bar and headed for the art gallery. But it was... It was already early morning, but it was still dark. Just before going inside, Diane turned around. It should have been too dark to see me, but I swear, her eyes looked right at me. They seemed to flash for a moment. I was so rattled that I left and went home. The next day, Anna was found dead. I, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> to the gallery to talk with Diane about it, to confront her. But once I was there, I couldn't find the courage to go through with it. Then I saw you there, and I just felt I had to go home. Nick has been seeing Diane every night recently. He just left for tonight, too. I, I, I really don't know what to do. <laughs> York, we have to take Nick in for questioning. No, not yet. This alone isn't enough. Emily, answer me. This is Emily. Agent York is with me, too. I've just received word from Thomas at the Sheriff's Department. Something has happened at Becky's house. He was called in by Quinn, but he wasn't making any sense. We have no further details. I sent Thomas over there. Can you go back him up? Yes, sir. One other thing. It sounded like he said, Raincoat Killer. This may well be related to the murder case. Take all due precautions. <gasps> no! It couldn't be! Nick? Oh, please, no! What can I do? <laughs> Olivia, calm down. Emily, take care of Olivia. I'm heading over to Becky's. She lives in the big house over by the lake. Hurry! I just hope this is being serious. Damn it, Zach. We may have screwed up during the investigation. Thank you.